One second. So, Mr. Vice Chair, I'm passing a visual aid as well. But thank you, Chair and members. Today I am presenting for um, presentation only AB 362, which would study the efficacy of a land value tax system in California. Uh, I would like to thank the committee staff and the chair for all their work on engagement on this bill. And this bill today in print directs the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration to study a statewide land value taxation system as a potential alternative to our current property tax system. And land value, land value tax is not a new idea, LVT for short. It has existed since the 19th century after American political economist and journalist Henry George articulated it. The, the idea is simple. A land value tax would simply tax the value of land without regard to the structural improvements. This means that someone who improves their property will not be punished for it. Land value taxes incentivize improvements to property and housing development. And our current property tax system creates a disincentive for landowners to develop vacant lots because adding or improving structure would result in higher taxes. This is resulting in making California one of the most expensive places to live as we suffer from a housing crisis, with my district in the Bay Area being one of the most expensive areas in our state. And given this crisis, it is time we reassess our current system to better understand what op options we can employ as policymakers to incentivize more developments. Allentown in Pennsylvania implemented a partial LVT in 1996, and upon instituting this tax, the city experienced a 32% jump in building permits, while also seeing a tax decrease on residential parcels. The arguments offered in opposition can only truly be tested through a rigorous study of a land value tax, which is exactly what the bill seeks to do. Uh, what I presented today is a kind of neat visual to show, illustrate the point. At a very easy way to understand is the property tax system right now is the value of the land plus the buildings or structures on top of it. Land value is taxes only about the land. So as you see from the visual right now is that as you improve the property, your property taxation rate can go up. But with the land value tax, which only um, taxes and assesses the, the land itself, the physical earth beneath it, your tax rate can stay stable. In that essence too is the more efficient and more productive your use of land is, you have more people or more means to share that tax burden. So in the illustration, you see how the empty lot and the land value tax and the five story apartment have the same taxation rate, but the amount of payers, like so say if in the five story uh, condos could be five, five uh, five residents, five households sharing that property tax versus vacant lot being only one property holder. And this has been shown to improve and uh, make land use more efficient. And really that's what this bill is seeking to do is to ask for a study about this, show what the efficacy of it, what's the dollars and cents impact of it. Because there is a real potential possibly that um, there could be, we could have a way to help alleviate our housing crisis and also lower the prop the tax burden of residential parcels. That is actually a real possibility, but we'd only have that data to show if we had a robust study of it, and which is why I'm asking the state to do so. I think there are benefits and merits to it, and that's why I would like to ask for a study, and uh, hoping that as we continue to work on this bill and continue to build engagement, that we can build support for this, and I continue to work on honing this policy in the future. And with that, today I'm also pleased to be joining my witness and support, Ansel Lundberg, the co-chair of House Sacramento. Thank you, Assemblymember Lee. Thank you, Chair and members. Good afternoon. Appreciate the opportunity to speak in favor of Assembly Bill 362. So I'm a housing advocate in Sacramento, and I'm here to talk a little bit about why I think we should study a land value tax. Um, the reason is that so we can better understand how this policy could benefit a city like Sacramento or any of the communities that you may represent. Um, I'm, there's a concrete example of a change you might see in this city due to a land value tax. Um, the lot at 16th and J Street near Memorial Auditorium, um, you're seeing several surface parking lots in the middle of the downtown of a regional economic hub. And the reason is because those landowners face zero carrying cost for not developing those lots. Um, you know, we want to see housing, small businesses, and opportunities for growth and prosperity in our communities. We don't want to penalize these things. Um, so that land is being under-assessed under the current system um, while the landlord can speculate and harvest that land value that was actually created by the economic activity happening around that lot. So uh, I believe that a land value tax can help by simultaneously generating revenue for public services in growing areas as well as rewarding landowners that develop their properties. 
Um, so these are major questions like how do we pay for public services? And I believe that a study would bring value to and, and knowledge to help understand how to answer that question. Um, finally, I just want to indicate land prices are the perfect signal for what should go where in our cities. Um, housing should go near jobs, jobs can go near transit, and we can have restaurants and shops where people want to be. So studying an LVT will help us understand how to optimize and incentivize these things. Um, so with that and for these reasons, I ask for your support of Assembly Bill 362 by Assemblymember Lee. Thank you. Do we have any other witnesses in support? Any witnesses in opposition? Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Annalee Aiken on behalf of the Family Business Association of California in opposition. Thank you, Madam Chair. Jack Giannis on behalf of the California Fuels and Convenience Alliance in respectful opposition. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair and members. Uh, Kareem Greasy on behalf of the California Association of Realtors in opposition, uh, both for the concerns raised in the analysis and also for the reasons outlined in our letter. Uh, respectfully request a no vote at the appropriate time. Thank you so much. All right, do we have any questions from the committee? Thank you. Assembly Member Future Norris. Yes. Hi. Um, so I'll, I'll first say um, that. I do appreciate your commitment, Assembly Member, to think innovative ways to, to fuel more housing production. Um, but I think my concern from uh, my concern about the bill is really illustrated by your your graphic. So, in your graphic, you've got kind of a current system mm -hmm. that equals a tax base of fourteen thousand three hundred dollars. You then, in your land value tax thing you say that everybody would just have $1,000, but that only equals $6,000. In order to actually have the same tax base using a land value tax, everyone would have to pay $2,383, which means that every single family homeowner would experience an almost 100% increase in their taxes. And so that's kind of at the crux of what's problematic about this bill to me. So um, it dissuades, it, and I think your, your witness actually said that, it's a, that a land value tax is a perfect signal for what goes where. And I guess if we were just playing Monopoly and starting from scratch, that's great, but we're not. We're starting from a world where people live in those homes and the idea of increasing their taxes by nearly 100%, I think is, is for me just a non-starter. So I do wanna collaborate with you and work with you on, um, I guess, innovative ways to, innovative and creative ways perhaps to diversify our tax base, but um, this is not an approach that I can, can support. Thanks. Yeah, uh, so remember, I think I was just pointing out the fact that this, um, Illustration is about one parcel like evolving over time, not say like a neighborhood, a strip of neighborhood. Um, while I don't quite follow the math, I don't think necessarily it would result in individual taxpayers making or paying more taxes to make up that kind of deficit. I think what you're ta alluding to is the potential that residential parcels or parcels in general could fall in their tax burden actually because what you're talking about right now is you know the sh difference, right? Obviously, the totality in the property tax system is different. It is higher because it's land plus structure, which results in a higher net. There is a possibility in a world where we switch only to land that no matter the single family home, be apartment owner, whatever the property whatever the property structure is, they're paying a flat land tax, right? Assuming that the, pr the price doesn't change and stuff, right? Um, so they could actually be paying less of a tax in general, actually. But I think these are the kinds of questions and debacles with which we need to have a study, a robust study about is analyzing what is, and that's what kind of was in my bill is about the, the burden of an individual taxpayer, what perhaps a single family homeowner would be, and then also on the revenue side, right? What would a government look like? What would our revenue, would they fall? Would it, in, would it uh, would fall, would it increase? So I think that's why it's important to have a study look at the impacts of not just the homeowner, but then also the government revenue side too, and that's what we're seeking to do. So just want to clarify that aspect. Thanks, thank you. 
I, I certainly appreciate your um, presentation today and, and uh, your out-of-the-box thinking. Uh, have you considered, instead of having a bill, to actually go to an educational institution and to have them come up with uh, um, a study? Yeah, I think it's one of the options we've entertained, but there's nothing more certain than having the power of legislature say you should study this than us suggesting something that's out of the box that people might not be as interested. You know, often we in legislature ask or even our own departments to do something politely and they don't always, you know, comply with us. So I think it's always nice to have our kind of commitment to want to get more information, get more facts. So the heart of this, the study was just to get more facts, get more information, because at the end of the day, we know a lot of theor theories and a lot of potential for this, and if it doesn't, the math doesn't work out, then we don't have to go there. But I, I would yeah. um, suggest as you continue to work on this concept that, mm -hmm. that maybe you approach some of our um, um, educational institutions mm -hmm. in the meantime. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you very much for your presentation. Absolutely, thank you so much, Chair.